Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Babe and Library. Um, please excuse me if it sounds like I'm a little nasally or I'm congested, that's because I am. Um, I caught a summer cold and right now it's been bananas. July is one of those months where it's like club, another club, bus, train, another club, bar, lounge, you name it, I'm at it because it is cancer season, um, best season that there is. Don't argue with me, argue with your mama. Um, I am a cancer, my birthday was July 12th, um, but I also have about three to four other friends' birthdays this month. My brother's birthday is in two days. My best friend's birthday is today. So your girl has been out here um, and my immune system cannot catch up. I really need to give it a break, but I, I don't have it. I'm going to Chicago this weekend, this next upcoming weekend. Um, July 4th was a banger of a weekend. The following weekend was, again, my birthday weekend, so I was out here this past weekend. What was I doing? Say it with me. I was out here. Um, safely, of course, but again, I've got a summer cold, so if you just bear with me. Um, what you'll get to see in this weekend vlog, which I'm trying my hand at, was me going to the St. Louis Book Fair, getting a chance to rack up on um, some books, a lot of historicals, romance, um, you'll see in this vlog. I also, after that, was like, okay, well, let me kill some more time. I've got a gift card that's burning a hole in my pocket. I'm going to go to Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble had their buy one, get one 50% off hardcover, so take my money, um, and they most certainly did. They had no qualms, and they were like, if you buy three, you'll get a nice, you know, little bag. So I bought four, you know, <laughs> overachiever here. Uh, plus, it was the buy one, get one 50%, so I, I had to do it. Um, so you'll see me do a book haul. In addition to that, you all will get to see me build a book cart. Um, my shelf <coughs> is full and my room is not big enough for me to be able to put another shelf in here. Um, and so until I can get a chance to rearrange my room, a book cart is going to have to do. So you'll see me get a chance to build my book cart and I'm going to go ahead and put some of these books on now there. Let's go ahead and jump into a little bit of a B-roll footage of me at the book fair. Now, I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance because this footage is really shaky. And um, this is one of those instances where you're going to really be able to tell I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Essentially, what I'm saying is I can't walk, record, um, identify where I'm supposed to be, look at a map and drive a buggy all at the same time and not run into anybody. So... This is the best I've got, but as I continue to do vlogs like this, or at least try my hand at them, hopefully I'll get better. So just hang in there with me uh, through this wild and bumpy ride, because this is the best I could do, everyone. rows and rows of books here um, in this large auditorium. I primarily came here for fiction, African-American fiction, romance. Um, those are kind of the things that I was interested in. I will tell you that this particular fair had, I mean, a massive amount of mystery. I don't think that um, that was something that I expected it to have. But um, again, I was primarily just searching for some of those aforementioned genres, and I pretty much got a good find of what I was looking for. I'm very happy um, in my purchases, so you'll be able to see that in the video in a moment.
I'm back. I had a little bit of a coughing spell. So uh, I guess we'll start with the first thing, which was the St. Louis Book Fair. Um, I was able, I am assuming it was sponsored by Half Price Books, which is my favorite place to go. Um, again, we'll talk about Barnes & Noble, which is, again, you know, has all of the good a good finds, but at, not at the best prices because, again, paying full price has never been something that I have been accustomed to. Uh, but they took my money. Again, we're going to, assuming we're going to develop a relationship um, just by how much they, you know, had their way with me. But uh, I want to start with some of the books that I got for the book fair because I had an amazing deal. Right, I got nine books for about fourteen dollars, which I can't beat with a stick. So, um, a lot of it again is historical, historical romance. Um, so I am going to start with a series that you all are probably extremely familiar with. Something that I really love is uh, Shonda Land, um, and anything that comes out of her production company, you can pretty much guarantee I'm going to watch it. So. Um, I'm assuming that you probably will already know I'm referring to the historical romance that is the Bridgertons. Um, I did not read the, the book, so I was the person that is, again, love Shonda Rhimes and her production company, so I automatically knew I was going to watch it. Um, I actually love uh, the Viscount who loved me better than the Duke and I in terms of the season, but I said okay. I'm fully vested in the characters. I know what they look like um, based on the portrayal that is shown on screen, which actually works, you know, much better for me. Because again, this, the historical romance was an all white um, character cast to my knowledge. Again, I haven't read the book, so I can't be 110% sure. Um, but based on the books, um, now having some of them in my hand, I can definitely see that. So being able to see some of the characters in a diverse setting and being able to understand and have an idea of what the characters look like is going to help me a lot more as I get to the remaining um, items. So I was able to get each one of these for three a uh, dollar a piece. So I got books four, five, and six, I believe. So um, book four, I want to say, I could be completely wrong. It may be three or it may be four. Um, is going to be, I guess, some of my least favorite characters in the show. I know, actually, most the people that read this series love these characters, but they're not necessarily doing it for me. But I, I figured I would give them a chance in the book, and maybe I'll like them a lot more, which will give me a better appreciation for them once I get to see them in the show. Uh, but that is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Um, so this is going to be Colin and Penelope's book. Um, this does have a step back. So again, um, for all of my historical romance girlies that love a good step back in your original format, um, this has that for you. Um, this is in pretty great condition. If I do say so myself, again, it was a dollar. Um, if you all watch the show, you all are very familiar with who Penelope is. Um, she is a Featherington. Um, honey, they've been, this family has been going through it. Uh, the Featherington family is just as important or integral to the TV show as the Bridgerton family. So I'm really interested to see if they if it's true to the television show in terms of how much of an impact her family has. Um, but this is her and Colin's romance. So I'm very interested to see how this goes because we're not there in the show yet. Uh, but this was, again, a really great find for me. Um, the next book that I was able to pick up by Julia Quinn um, is going to be, hands down, my favorite female character um, of the Bridgertons, and that's going to be Eloise Bridgerton, and this is her relationship with Sir Philip. Uh, again, um, the only context that I have is the TV show, since I haven't read the other first two books or first three books in the series, um, but I found it very interesting that we were already introduced to Sir Philip in the show, so I'm very interested to see how the writers in the show will do it in comparison to the book. Um, I'm hopeful that I will love um, Eloise 
as much if not more than what I love her now because again she's hands down one of my favorite characters she's just so strong-willed um she has her own desires her own wills that's not necessarily based in um you know marriage and a family again I'm sure that this is probably what she's going to want in this book but I'm already going to bring my love for the character in as I'm reading it um, and then the last Julia Quinn book that I was able to get, um, which also has a step back, is um, going to be When He Was Wicked. Uh, now, this is, interesting enough, a character that is not in the forefront of the TV show. So I have absolutely no perspective on her. This is going to be Francesca's book. Um, Francesca is <clears throat> a character that's going to be very interesting because I think in the show they just switched her out because what I have heard about this book, it is probably the spiciest um, in terms of the entire series. And because the character in the show was very young um, and they were portrayed very young, they did not want to have that. So they wanted to switch out the characters to make sure that it could be as closely aligned with Francesca in the book. So again, um, I've stated here on this particular channel, I'm an adult reader. I love adult content, which would be Spice in, um, or Smut in my books. So I, I doubt it has uh, the Smut aspect, but I do believe that it's probably, um, you know, more aligned with what I would like in my, my romance. So I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to give me some really great insight into Francesca um, and get me interested in her um, more than I already am um, because there's, you know, very little intrigue for me and her from her storyline of the show but um being that I've heard really great reviews of her in this book series I I'm definitely intrigued so those were again three really great finds and oh sorry uh this book has a step back as well um so I had a chance to uh, get those three again a dollar a piece now my next set of romance finds is going to probably be a vlog if I can get myself to do dedicated vlogs because uh, again these two series uh, along with a lot of series on my shelves um, I have a backlist of authors that I've never read before um, popularly influenced by a lot of fellow booktubers so um, and that's definitely the case with this particular author so I was able to pick up four books as well a dollar a piece by Lisa Clayfish so I'm gonna step my foot in that pool um her backlist is really really deep i think there was about four or five more that i could have picked up at this fair but i didn't want to jump all the way in and submerge myself just to pick up books because they were a dollar if i did not love her writing um or if i wasn't a fan of how she portrayed um her characters in a historical setting so i just said okay let me pick up four Two of these are highly recommended by um, other booktubers that I trust almost implicitly. So I was like, okay, well, let me start with um, the first one I'll say is Devil in Winter. Um, again, has a really nice step back. Um, this particular book, I'm going to say, is influenced by um, Jess at Peace Love Books. Uh, she was one of the first people that I saw that ever read or recommended this book and I'm gonna tell you right now if you do not follow her book two page you have never um found her on book talk or bookstagram I trust her she has her hand um on the pulse when it comes to stole her romance um small town romance right now is is really her bag taboo forbidden um I any video she puts out I'm watching immediately. Um, I, I'm pretty sure at this point I, I can pretty much say I stand for her account. But um, she was the first person that I saw read um, Devil in Winter. So I said, okay, if I'm going to pick anything up from Lisa Clayfish, this is probably going to be one um, that I'm going to start with. Uh, and so this book, again, a um, little bit of a synopsis because I haven't really started into these books. I, I don't know it off of hand, but I will say reading through this, uh, this is about a character who really is going to come into money, come into an inheritance. Um, and as most things, when it comes to an inheritance, 
there's something that may be a stipulation attached to it or your family is going to have expectations for you. And so in order for the main character um, to feel as though she has ownership and agency over the finances that she's about to come into, she's like, okay, well, let me get a husband. Um, so she goes up to, or she decides that she's going to take interest in a particular rake, and the rake take her, takes her up on that offer. So again, I know I'm not doing the best synopsis, and I don't necessarily want to read from the back, uh, but if you are looking for more information regarding this, again, I will tell you to ch check out Jessica at Peace Love Books. Um, she's going to have a better synopsis of it than I can ever provide. <clears throat> Uh, my next Lisa Claypas book, um, is recommended by a booktuber named, um, Books with Samantha. Again, really getting into the point where I am adoring Books with Samantha's wreck. Um, and this is something that I saw her rant and rave about. And I was like, okay, when I saw it, let me check it out. And I think it's this exact cover that kind of caught my eye. And it's going to be, again, The Magic by Lisa Claypas. Nice thing about this, it has a really nice step back. Um, again, a dollar for each one of these books. So um, I'm probably going to put this one down because I think it is going to, it's a little bit shiny for you. Um, but this is, <clears throat> again, um, oh, I know what this one is about. <laughs> I was like, I just watched her video the other day. Um, this is a situation in which um, a young lady fell in love or decided to spark up a romance with someone that worked for her father, and her father did not feel like this was a suitable match for her, um, pretty much assumed that he ruined her reputation. And again, in a historical romance context, uh, reputation is everything, purity, chastity is everything. Um, and he decided to essentially banish this particular, um, you know, I don't know if he was a stable hand or, um, you, what he did for her father, but, um, he decided to say, hey, you need to leave my estate. You can't associate with my daughter anymore. He left, went to become, um, a self-made man, came into his own money, and then he said, I'm going to take revenge on the main character just for what she did to me and her family and it is um you know as we know his plans didn't necessarily go through because there's still history and tension within the two um and from that I'm assuming a romance um sparks back up and I'm interested to see that so again that's again um again the magic again uh, I'm not doing either one of these books or any of these books justice but if you'd like more information related to this, please check out Books with Samantha, uh, both for Samantha and um, Jessica's booktube information. I'm going to link them down in the information below. Um, my last two Lisa Cape Claypis books are actually in the same series, so I figured it would be a good time if I did like the first book, I would pick up the third book. Again, I'm going to have to figure out if I can borrow the second book from the library, but... Um, that is these two. So the first one is Mine Till Midnight, um, and then this is Tempt Me at Twilight. So both of these books, again, were a dollar. I'm very interested to see, um, how much I like Lisa Claypas writing. Uh, I think this one talks about a woman of modest means meets a society man skilled in the art of seduction. Again, I love a man who can seduce me, obviously, um, that's going to be something I can't wait to jump into. And then this one is two opposites in every way, except when it comes to desire, which is the tagline. Love that for myself. Opposites attract. Uh, let me see if this is a grump in sunshine. If it is, I'm going to eat it up like candy. So uh, again, those are the historical romances that I gathered that were a dollar. Um, another historical romance that I was able to get now, this one is something that I saw Buzz a little bit about um, a few years back, and I am not a war-centered romance girly, so I don't really have the interest in that, but 
I figured, okay, it's $2, I can pick it up. And that is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simmons. Um, this is a chunker of a book. Um, I think this is a, I want to say somewhat of a teen or young adult romance centered around World War I, um, in which you have a young officer in the army, um, and he meets one of two sisters that are, um, living in, during the time of Hitler's attack, and so this is their romance. I'm not 100% sure this is something that I'm going to keep. Uh, but I did pick this up because I figured if ever there was going to be a time I wanted to read it, why not pick it up? Um, it's $2. That would be something that I would uh, take my hand at. And then the last one, completely different from this, not a romance recommendation by any means. Um, this is actually something that I never figured I would read, but um, I saw this kind of get a little bit of a resurgence here recently, and I figured... There's no better time. Let me just pick it up. I may be torn to bits or pieces, but that's going to be my dark Vanessa. Um, and that is by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This book, again, is not a romance. I want to be very, very clear on that. This is about, um, you know, a situation in which a young teen, I think she was about 15 at the time, it's, it has two time periods. Um, so it starts back in 2000, which... She was in school, and she developed a relationship with her professor. At the time, she thought it was a consensual relationship. She fell in love with him, um, but to us, obviously, older man, underage minor, um, we know that that necessarily wasn't as, um, um, the words I'm looking for is a consensual relationship, right? We knew that you know, it wasn't what she believed to be um, her first love, a romance in which that these two were compatible or equally yoked. Um, and from there, it talks about how fast forward into 2017, where, you know, there's new stories going about um, talking about men that were in powerful situations and took advantage of young women and sexually abused them. And um, the man in question is the professor that she fell in love with and it allows her to or it gives her the opportunity to really grapple with her situation and make the decision whether or not she wants to come into the light and share her experience. So I'm assuming this one is going to tear me to bits and uh, again I held off from reading this for so long. I know that this is literary work that is um, highly popularized. I just knew I wasn't sure if this was something that I wanted to take on myself, but um, I think that may be the time for me to be able to take into that, um, this read and, and let it consume me. Okay, so unlike my last set of recommendations, um, which are all historical fiction, um, they were all kind of influenced by booktube. My Barnes & Noble purchase was inspired solely by Bookstagram. I mean, Bookstagram, my timeline is black, beautiful, bold, um, and the recommendations are bountiful. So that led me to go in here and uh, spend money as like I was a dealer. Like I was just throwing dollars around. Um, so this is a set of books that, I mean, when I tell you I had FOMO, I felt like I don't have a choice. You're going to buy these. You're going to read them. Again, because we all know our bookshelf can contain a bunch of beautiful bit books, but you not reading them. They're looking there and they're, they have the aesthetic pleasure. But these here, I'm going to read. And the way I know I'm going to read is I've already established book myself to be in book clubs that have this on the docket for the month of August. So the first one I'm actually in two book clubs for on Bookstagram, which is going to be Night Crawling. Now, maybe I, I, I wish I could uh, throw my hair around like this young lady, but I just had a birthday and I'm getting older. I am reaching my mid-30s, and 
I can't afford to be throwing out my neck like this. So um, I know this character is relatively young. Um, it is about um, a young lady who they labeled her as a high school dropout. So I'm not sure if she is in her teens and she recently dropped out or if she's in her early 20s. But um, this centers a story in which um, she's trying to figure out ways to make um, ends meet to care for herself and her brother as well as you know watching out for her neighborhood um, and a couple of its residents and through that she gets into um, a situation in which she witnessed um, something as an altercation with the Oakland police which led her to doing what um, I'll learn more about which is called night crawling and she has been identified as a witness and as you all know when it comes to not only being a witness, but when it has to do with maybe corruption within a police uh, police force, it puts a lot of tension on you, um, which is basically making sure that you can stay alive and, and be there the next day. So I'm in two book clubs that have this going on for the month of August, and I cannot be more excited because everyone that I'm seeing read this is giving it five stars. Um, it is also an OPA Oprah's book club pick and as you know not only does what Oprah touch turn into gold but it is also a situation where she's giving you recommendations she's if she puts her stamp on it you know it's going to be good so I can't wait to read this hopefully you guys will get some more information from me next month but um, I was very much excited to be able to pick up Nightcrawling now this second book baby if, if you knew that this was going around and making its round on BookTube, this next one should come as no surprise to you because it's on BookTube, it is on Bookstagram, it is on TikTok. You name it, maybe this book is there. And that's going to be You Made a Fool of Death uh, with Your Beauty by Ekweke Emezi. This is actually going to be my first Ekweke Emezi book, and I know I should be extremely shamed um, because... Akweke has Pet, um, Akweke has The Death of Vivek Korjic, um, a lot of books that are on my TBR, but this is the one uh, which was the first foray into romance, um, so I knew that if I was going to jump into this author's back work, I needed to start here. This is also um, a book centered around a character that um, has a relationship with a father and with a son, um, which I typically don't see in a black romance setting. So um, as you may know, a lot of romance writers um, have a lot of tropes that are catered to a, you know, a traditional white American audience. And I don't get to see that in a black love story. So when I heard that this had the, the father and son um, taboo love story and it was a romance I knew I had to get my hands on it also because Okweke has everyone by the throat this is something that I can't get away from and I'm not trying to so this is something that I, I hope to be able to read in um, August now if you can see I am I'm, I'm going with the theme orange orange reddish um, so my next two books is a vibe. No, um, aesthetic lost here. The next one is going to be Honey and Spice by Bola Babaloa. Um, this is a fake dating, um, college romance, I believe. And while it is a college romance, it does not mean, um, that the love story is any less impactful for me. I heard that this has to do with a British um, black main character who has her own radio show in college. Love to see it. Um, and essentially, she has been, you know, keeping love at bay, right? She is pretty much the friend that you go to to be like, I don't want to deal with my man anymore. Let me tell her my problems and I'm going to make sure. And what she's going to make sure is that you don't go back to him. Sis, you don't need him. You're strong. You're independent. Love. You just need to be in, be successful. Um, she's that friend that's going to tell you, leave him. Dump him. 
you can do better. So essentially, I hear that she is has been basically trash talking this guy, um, and saying that you know he he's community, um, and she wants her friends to stay away from him. And when she does that, um, it kind of backfires on her into a situation where they have to fake date. And as you know, anytime someone goes into the fake dating relationship, it's going to turn into real feelings. Um, I can't wait to hear, hear more about it. I'm seeing it giving four and five star energy. Again, cover is absolutely beautiful. And similar to Nightcrawling, this is another popular book club. This is Reese, Reese Witherspoon's book club. And again, anything she touched turns to gold as well. Great reading recommendation. So I'm interested to see what all the hype is here. And then lastly, I receive Half Blown Rose. Um, I haven't been hearing too much, but I think this is about to start making its rounds in um, the book world. This is a story that really grabs my attention because it has an older heroine. I believe she is in her 40s. So she is estranged to her husband and she decides to say, hey, I need to get out of here. I'm going to go overseas, spend some time, um, you know, getting reacclimated with myself, finding things that I enjoy. And through that, um, she found a young man to enjoy. Um, so this is an older heroine, younger hero, um, you know, really getting into her fulfillment and enjoyment of life, uh, being reintroduced to certain passions of hers. And um, essentially, I think she's going to have to run back into her estranged husband. And I'm really wondering if she's going to choose her old love um, and he get his shit together uh, which it doesn't sound likely if she is going to choose the new fella and, you know, see where this romance can go or if she's going to take to the age old trope and choose herself. Um, I have absolutely no clue which one it'll be, but whatever it is, I'm hoping it's going to be a good time. Um, so that was the fourth and final book that was recommended from Bookstagram. Again, just look at this beautiful aesthetic. You all know I already took an Instagram reel on it. So if you don't follow me on um, Instagram, please choose to go there. It is going to be at Babeman Library. Um, that information will be linked in the chat at, or the description box below as well. Um, and so that pretty much cares of all of the books that I've bought just on Saturday alone. Um, I also am going to hop you all into my book cart creation. So I got my handy girl on and um, built a book cart so these stacks of books can go on there because my shelf is full. So take a check, uh, take a look at that, and um, you all have a great day. I come to you today as a victim of Amazon Prime Day. Um, I honestly got on there and I really didn't need anything, but I said, okay, what can you do bookish? That's, you know, what, what are you, what have you been needing? A book car. Um, I actually would love more bookshelves in my room, um, or in my office rather, but I don't have the space. This is a multifunctional space. I've got three chairs, a bench. I know that seems excessive, but I was this before this was a uh, my office before COVID. Um, this was solely my makeup um sanctuary, and so I needed to transform this into a multifunctional use space. So I don't really have um a lot of area to put multiple bookshelves. Um, so what I said I would do is get a book cart, but I'll be honest, I really didn't want to spend um, the 40 to $45 for one of those book carts. Um, so I waited until Amazon Prime and here we are. So I'll try to be like the rest of you girlies and Always cut away from you, never towards you. I'm sure you all are.
everyone, this is Chloe. She just wanted to say hi. So hopefully there'll be another book haul in the future.